So let's start talking about plain stress. From the abstract point of view, imagine a problem in which we know, you know that what, there is one principal direction, which is constant, so where there is no shear stress, no shear stress, but not only that, but the normal stress is also zero. So in some cases, we can imagine that some normal stresses in certain plane is zero. For instance, if I take this structure like that, and I just put that to forces like that, for instance, just pulling it in the horizontal, in the pla in plane direction, what can we say about the stresses in that direction? How are they? It's logical to assume that they are zero in these directions. Both the normal, because that's a sheet, a very, uh, a very thin sheet, a very thin part. So maybe at the interior they are a little, but I mean, the normal stresses are zero here, are zero here. So in between, they couldn't be so different from zero. So let's assume that they are zero. The, the shear stresses are zero here. The shear stresses in that plane, in that plane behind also zero. So let's assume that everywhere. So. That's an example of when I know that the direction out normal to this plane is a principal direction with zero principal stress. Okay? So then, if I choose the axis so that the um, vertical x, the vertical, uh, sorry, that, that normal x is z, so then look, the stress state would be just the normal stresses in x and y and the tangential stresses tau x, y, but then when we know out of plane, tangential stresses neither in this plane. Okay? So now, now, I can, I do the same assumptions. The stress field is like that. So there are only three components of the stresses which are different from zero at all points, which are these in-plane stresses. They are in plane. That look that all stresses different from zero are in the plane as vectors contained in the plane analysis. That is what is called plane stress, because all the stresses are in the plane analysis. The general 3D uh, stress tensor looks like that, so all this row, the last row and the last column are zero. And then I assume that the non-zero stresses, sigma x, sigma y, tau x, z, are not function, are not function of z. So that's what I said that well, the stress z, z here is zero, here is zero, in between, I mean, it should be constant, okay? And zero too. So in general, we assume that in the mathematical description of sigma x and tau xy, z doesn't appear. So as I change of in the plane of point, in the plane of analysis, then the stresses can change. But in the width direction, the stresses remain constant, okay? Doesn't change. And of course, they can depend on time because this applies also to uh, not only to uh, quasi-static problems but also to dynamic problems. Okay. So that uh, the, the point is that okay, this is a hypothesis. In what situations this is reasonable? That is what is said here. Typically, in thin plane structures. So structures which are thin in one direction, the z direction, they can be large in the other two dimensions. Then they are loaded in the in-plane. So the body forces and the tractions are applied in the thickness. But there is no traction applied on the faces, on the two faces. Okay? So, and that, that thickness being much, much smaller than the other dimension. Okay? That's typically the case. In that case, we reasonably assume, it's an assumption, that's not an exact theory. Okay? And to be exact, maybe, no, in neither this. Uh, it's not exact. It's just an approximation to the reality, which simplifies very much the things. Okay? So look that even the constrained displacements, the, everything which forms part of the gamma sigma and gamma u is in the plane of analysis. The, uh, the, 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 the surfaces of the plane are free of any actions in terms of stresses nor constraints. Right? Okay. So let's see what are the, con the consequences of that. Now, we do these assumptions, these assumptions here, and let's see what are the consequences of that. Well, first, we have the strains as a function of the stresses. So first consequence, if the stresses are not function of Z, 
The strains, which are a combination of the stresses, are neither functions of z. So are just functions of x, y, and t, x, and y, t. Okay? Now I apply the fact that some of these stresses are zero. These stresses are zero. So now I replace into here, and I obtain these are the inverse Hooke's law for the case. For instance, look that sigma z in these three equations doesn't appear. Why? Because it's zero. Uh, gamma xy, the, the, the angular stresses, are proportional to the, to the tangential stresses, so the out-of-plane uh, angular stresses uh, strains are zero, and the only non-zero angular strain is gamma xy. Look, what happens with epsilon z? If we look, for instance, this equation, this is a set of three equations in which there appear epsilon x, epsilon y, and epsilon z, and only sigma x and sigma y. So one operation that we could do is just to resolve, uh, to eliminate sigma x and sigma y from the system, and it would remain an equation on epsilon x, epsilon y, and epsilon z. So I do that, and what do you obtain this equation? So what happens here is that, look, the strains are not zero. Epsilon x is not zero. Epsilon y is not zero. Epsilon z is not zero, but it can be, it's not an, un an unknown, so to speak. Why? Because it can be directly computed in terms of epsilon x and epsilon y. Okay? So look, uh, and this year strains are zero because so are the corresponding uh, shear stresses. Okay? So uh, look, look at the aspect of the uh, stress tensor. So zero, 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 zero here. Only relevant the ones in the plane x, y. However, as for the strain tensor, this is epsilon z is not zero. Is not zero, right? Take into account. But we'll see that it doesn't play any role. We'll see. So we can just forget this, this term and consider this thing. That's something that I will prove. And in any case, if we need that eventually to know that, we, once we know epsilon x and epsilon y, we can compute epsilon z by just this algebraic formula in terms of the Poisson ratio. Okay? That says, for instance, that if epsilon x and epsilon i are positive, if I stretch positively these sides, what is going to happen in the third direction? What is going to be the epsilon z strain negative? So it's going to, going to shrink. Okay? It's again the Poisson ratio. Look, another point. For nu equals zero, that strain becomes zero. For the Poisson ratio equals zero, that strain becomes zero. And then that is a specific case in which the strain tensor is also plain in the sense that there are no components out of plane. But that's, that's not the general case. Okay? So, well, from here, we can compute epsilon z, but we can compute also uh, sigma x, sigma y. So, by, by solving these equations, we then obtain the three sigma x, sigma y, tau xy stresses in terms of epsilon x, epsilon y, and xy strains. So, we can just place that into a vector. Now, I'm using Voigt's notation. That would be the vector of relevant stresses. What are the vectors of the Instead of being a six column vector, now it's a three, a three uh, element, three, uh, uh, three, three dimensional vector. What about the strains? Look, epsilon z doesn't appear here. Why? Well, because I've substitu substituted this equation. Finally, here in this linear equation, in which appears epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma xy. So if I just apply the matrix, look for the matrix that relates every component with that, I obtain this matrix. So there is a 3 times 3 matrix. In terms of what? Of E and nu. In terms of the material properties, Young modulus and, and, and Poisson ratio, so that multiplying this 3 times 3 matrix that we call C, the elastic properties, constitutive matrix, but, which is 3 times 3, instead of being 6 times C, 6, as it was in the general case, multiplying this times epsilon, I obtain the stresses. That's the constitutive equation. 
So that considers the equation becomes a much simplified one, much more simplified one, with a vector of stresses, three stresses, the in-plane stresses, related to the in-plane strains, to a matrix, which is a specific for this plane stress, because it comes out from these simplifications, and that looks like that. OK? So finally, again, the stresses depend on, not, doesn't depend on Z, because this doesn't depend on Z. No, sorry, the strains doesn't depend on Z, and the stresses and the strains are related in that way. 